The electric vehicle industry is growing fast. Around the world, EVs can be seen on the streets in increasing numbers. Last year, despite the pandemic, sales grew 40 percent. There's been corresponding growth, of course, for EV battery producers who are making big investments in their factories and supply chains to keep up. These battery makers include the South Korean companies LG Energy Solution and SK Innovation, as well as the world's biggest battery producer, the Chinese company CATL. It's a big se sector that's been making the headlines recently. So with an in-depth look at the EV battery market and its dynamics, I'm joined in the studio today by our very own uh, Kim Sung-min. Sung-min, thank you very much for being with us today. Good to be with you. Well, so let's start with the big picture. The EV industry is really taking off uh, commercially. And uh, so it would seem that this could only mean a global race uh, to take the lead. Uh, tell us about the state of the industry right now. Devin, just last year, around like 2.5 million battery electric and plug-in hybrid cars were sold globally. And this year, the number is expected to grow by 70%. That means the market for the vehicle's most crucial part, the battery, will also see tremendous growth. By 2025, the global EV battery market is expected to grow by 25% to reach more than 67 billion US dollars. And demand for EV batteries is forecast to rise 23-fold in the next 10 years. Well, so this would explain uh, all of the investments that have uh, been announced recently when President Moon of South Korea went to the, uh, to the U.S. to meet with President Biden. Uh, those two companies we mentioned, uh, as SK Innovation and LG Energy Solution, announced a total of $14 billion in uh, new investments in plants in America. It's interesting, though, that unlike the combustion engine of the past, where car makers would make their own engines, uh, this key component is being made in partnership uh, with other countries. Uh, so, uh, you know, tell us about that. Yes, in addition to big investments to expand production capacity, a key feature of the market is the partnerships between automakers and battery producers. It's a major trend as you can see on this list. You can see South Korea's biggest battery makers, SK Innovation and LG Energy Solution, partnering up with the top two automakers of the US, Ford and GM. Conventional car makers have produced their own engines and parts for over 100 years. But because the shift to electric cars started happening so quickly, they weren't ready. So they had no choice but to partner with battery makers. This is actually a win-win situation for both sides because the automakers get a stable supply while the battery makers can grow their business based on stable demand. So the industry is quite new, and as we can see, uh, the battery makers are, are, in a, are in a race jockeying for a position. Who's in the lead now? Well, undoubtedly, the front runner is China's CATL, which takes up 32.5% of the global market share. In second place is South Korea's LG uh, Energy Solution. But right now, even if you add up the market shares of the top three Korean battery producers, theirs is smaller than CATL's. Experts say this could change, though, because the market is still young. The U.S. is aiming to become a powerhouse in the global EV market. There are no intentional standards for the EV batteries yet. But once standards are made, then Korea could be in a favorable position thanks to its partnership with the U.S. All right, Sung Min, so uh, when we think of EV batteries, I think the first thing that comes to mind is eco-friendly. Uh, but there are some potential problems here because, uh, for example, what happens to batteries when they go flat? It would seem that would have a negative environmental impact. Right, that's why EV battery recycling is so important. EV batteries usually last about 10 years, and once the battery's efficiency falls below 80%, then it's considered to be flat and should be disposed of. South Korea is expected to produce around 400,000 flat batteries by 2030, and that number will grow exponentially as millions of EVs are sold in the coming decades. Unlike smartphone batteries, EV batteries are huge, each of them weighing around 400 kilograms. They're highly flammable, so proper disposal is important. But also, recycling the battery materials offsets the environmental damage that would be caused if you just went out and mined more resources. The world is trying to reduce carbon emissions and achieve carbon neutrality. The amount of emissions from recycling nickel to 60 to 70 percent less than from sourcing nickel from mines. This alone can be the reason to recycle. Okay, so we can see a very clear and direct benefit uh, from recycling EV batteries in terms of emissions. Uh, but companies will also have an incentive to do this uh, to save money and to use their own resources more efficiently. 
Yes, it all comes down to maximizing efficiency because resources are finite. The materials used in battery making like copper, nickel, cobalt, lithium and manganese exist in limited amounts and can be found in only a few countries. Recycling extracts these resources to be used in making new batteries. So this can maximize efficiency while helping countries reduce their reliance on others in securing the resources. Okay, so battery recycling uh, is an important task for us economically, environmentally, but if, if electric vehicles are going to be with us for many generations, uh, then it stands to reason that there will be an industry to process all of this battery recycling. Right, the global battery recycling market is forecast to grow by 18 billion US dollars by 2030. The Biden administration is reportedly looking into boosting the recycling of batteries in the US so that lithium and other metals can be reused to strengthen the American EV industry. Global automakers like Tesla and Volkswagen are opening up their own battery recycling plants so they can um, get materials and reuse them. South Korea is getting in on it too. One of the biggest recycling plants in the country is operated by a company called Songil High Tech. Its plant is big enough that the company calls it a mine located in the city. Normally, one nickel mine produces around 10,000 to 40,000 tons of nickel a year. Here, just by recycling, we can produce 4,400 tons of cobalt and nickel. The company produces around 220 tons of nickel and 140 tons of cobalt per month, which is a significant contributing to the supply of these materials. So they figured out how to do it and they've made a viable business out of it, it would seem, uh, at, at uh, Sung Il Tech. Um, but uh, you actually went down to their plant in uh, Jalabukdo province and saw how they do it. How do they recycle these batteries which are so complex and technologically advanced as well as even dangerous? Well, normally discarded electronics are shredded in bulk to be sorted and reprocessed. But EV batteries are lithium ion like the batteries in our phones. That means they're flammable and have to be handled carefully. So first, the batteries are dismantled by hand. Then they're shredded separately in machines filled with liquids or gases that keep them from catching fire. The result of this step is kind of a mix of chemicals and materials they call black mass. Next, they extract the valuable components, the metals I mentioned before, like nickel and cobalt, which are sent to companies that will use them to produce new batteries. Well, that's fascinating. And so we can see that uh, companies are taking the initiative on what is going to be a very big industry, uh, I think we can say, in the future. Uh, but also there's the issue of companies starting to introduce uh, regulations on this industry. And, and when they do, uh, there are going to be uh, steps to take for the companies in the industry. Tell us about that. Yes, governments are inching toward requiring some level of recycling for EV batteries. The EU has a specific roadmap for the management of flood batteries. The roadmap sets out specific requirements for battery producers and third parties acting on their behalf who have to take back waste batteries from end users. All these batteries must be recycled and the recycling process has to reach the specific minimum levels of efficiency. South Korea has not yet made specific rules, but there will have to be discussions about the rules sooner rather than later so that the industry can achieve sustainability in the long term. All right, Sungmin, thanks for getting us up to speed on the EV battery industry. A very interesting report. Thank you for that. Thank you.